Hey guys, welcome back to the Average Finance channel. Um, today we'll be discussing why vintage shoes are the best value compared to new stuff or even any some of the pre-owned stuff out there. Um, it's not going to be an end-all be-all. It won't be a controversial video like last time. Um, but really we're just going to investigate five reasons why and a couple things that you may have to look out for so that way you don't get uh, beat up or scammed too much on that side of the market. But yeah, there'll be a, a video on that. Stay tuned. And here's that intro. All right, so my first reason is uh, you're gonna get a uh, better quality overall. Now, what I mean by that is I'll give two examples. Um, your, inch, your, your stitches per inch is gonna be a lot higher. And what does that mean, right? So here I have my older Hanover, right? This is probably like a 70s, 80s model. But if you can see right here, this is your welt on the shoe. And you're gonna see that there's like, for example, if you take my fingernail, it's like half an inch or so, or three quarters, there's like a good, five or six stitches per inch, probably a little less than that. No, four to six, let's, let's agree on that. And that's really gonna designate a sign of higher quality because that takes a lot more effort from the machine itself and the person crafting it, you know, as they go around um, the welting machine. Um, well, the stitching machine. Anyways, I'm being too specific here. But yes, that's one example as to why. My honor shoes nowadays, I don't have a example on me, but if we get enough likes, right, I'll go ahead and deconstruct one and I'll show you versus an older one. Um, let's see, but modern shoes nowadays, really, they're gonna have a very low stitch per inch. If you look at um, older Allen Edmonds, for example, versus newer, you're gonna see that the stitches per inch are a lot lower on the newer ones versus the older ones. And we're talking like 20 years in difference, so not that, that long. Um, so you're gonna get that. And then number two is the construction on these is going to be what you see on older shoes, right? Back then, uh, there wasn't a lot of reason as to why you would fake a Goodyear welt or the appearance of one. Uh, some did have like fake welts. If it was a Blake stitch and it had like a welt on the side, a decorative welt, that makes sense somewhat. That's more in the, in the Blake stitch Italian world. But really, you're gonna see in a lot more modern shoes, they're gonna replicate this long wing style, right? Again, my hand over. And they're gonna, sorry about that. My neighbors have dogs and they're kind of loud. <laughs> um, but they're gonna replicate this sort of welt and you're gonna realize that if you pull on it, just like Rose Anvil kind of recommends to, um, black found on his name, I'll get it. Um, you're gonna realize that it's not a real welt. It's gonna be just one of those glue on applications and this sole will not be able to rip off. It'll just be simple uh, cemented construction. But yeah, reason number one, better quality. And let's go on to number two. Let's go, go ahead and go on that. Number two comes down to better materials. Um, now, there are good shoes nowadays that have great, you know, great uh, materials. Um, obviously, there's all kinds of stuff, all kinds of box cap out there that are on good shoes and everything. But we're trying to save money as to the reason why we're going to put to shoes, which will be another reason later on. Um, but it's better materials overall. If, if you can see on um, older shoes, you're going to notice that there's a trend of like a higher quality material in general. This is my shell cord and loafer from Johnson & Murphy. It's an uh, aristocraft. But you're gonna notice that, generally speaking, it's gonna be a higher quality, especially in the entry level phase, in the sub 200, 300 sort of area for shoes. Uh, versus back then, a shoe that was in that area in general was a lot uh, better in, in materials were at uh, more than just the upper. We're talking about inside, you know, your insole, things like that. Um, and really, from what I've experienced right, it's not a overall thing, overall actually i've noticed that leathers tend to be a little thicker back then right again it could just be a higher quality thing referring to my number one um just back then things were built a little better simple as that um but yeah that's my number two better materials all right so number three we're going to go down to a better value overall this is referring back to number number two you're going to save a lot more money um in the long run especially um buying a vintage shoe versus something that's you know, maybe sub $200, like an Aldo or some other store, um, mall brand or whatever. But the reason why is because I referred to it earlier. You're gonna realize that a lot of them are not constructed correctly or they give off the appearance of a certain construction when really it's not true. I, for example, I used to have a, I used to look at floor shimes in department stores, you know, newer floor shimes, not, not the good stuff. And uh, they would have this stitch on them. <laughs> And it was not real, that's for sure. I, I knew that um, just looking at it because the stitches wouldn't correlate from the inside or the outside at all. 
It was just the appearance of high quality. And uh, <laughs> finally, they're resolable. If you fall in love with a pair of shoes, you mold them to your feet as good quality shoes should. Um, in the long run, you can resole them and keep wearing them and wearing them out. And I'll talk about this a little more in another reason, but um, they can also help you out. Like I said, not only in the long run, money wise, but also environmental wise. But yeah, that's my third reason. It's a better value overall. My fourth really comes down to a more romantic one. It's uh, the heritage aspect of it. Um, look, some of these brands are not around today. Um, Hanover, for example, used to be, I think from like the 30s or 40s, I'll need to look that up again. But it's a older brand. They uh, got absorbed by, absorbed by, I think, um, by a certain other brand, Bostonian. And they're still around today. They got, though they got absorbed by Clark's, which I actually have right here as a modern shoe example. It's not a very exact comparison, but I get it. Um, and they don't make shoes like this anymore. They used to, they had a uh, reproduction at one point and those were pretty cool, but they weren't the same. Uh, but they look just like this. And there's just a, a, a certain charm to them as well. When you look at them, you see there's character to them, things like that. As you can see, I wore mine quite a bit. Um, not recently, not so much, because I've been a little more casual. But you know, they have some wear, they have some character. And uh, I think that's something that only nerds care about like me. Um, in the long run, it just develops that sort of look and feel. Um, and what else? I'm looking at my list, sorry. But it's also, you're gonna get a lot of timeless designs. I showed this shoe earlier. This is my uh, loafer from Johnson & Murphy. This is part of their Aristocraft line. And if, I don't know, I don't think you can tell on the screen, but this is Shell Cordovan. Um, you're gonna get this sort of design and this design never really ages, so to speak. Um, sure, there's maybe ups and downs if you're following fashion like that, but really a shoe like this will never fall out of fashion. Um, at least not in the next hundred years, right? Just as it has this past hundred years or 80 years or so. But yes, that is my number four reason. Yeah, we're tracking up. Number four is really the heritage aspect of the shoes. And uh, oh, one more thing, uh, just to go back to the heritage aspect. You know, since I said this is Johnson & Murphy, I'm sure we all know the brand's still around today. They have quite a bit of retail stores and they're successful in their own rights today. I, I can't say they're not, but they're not the same. Uh, they make a lot more of those like uh, sneaker dress shoe sort of things. And uh, those are uh, those are an abomination. Let's keep it at that. Um, but, you know, you got this sort of thing where Johnson Murphy used to be a true dress shoe at one point, And it just looks great. Timeless. Number four. Number five, I alluded to earlier. Um, all these are really connected. But, hey, that's how you know you have good five, good five reasons. But it's better for the environment overall. Um, the thing is, when you're buying a new shoe, you're contributing to new production, right? And, and that's fine inherently, but the issue with that is a lot of shoes nowadays are not made for, um, for resolability. They're not made for that sort of thing. They're made to follow certain trends. They're made to follow certain things, certain guidelines, certain profit margins, um, and quarterly um, profits, I guess you could say. And so they're not made that same way anymore. It was back then, it used to be the long-term relationship with the customer and things like that, more old school sort of stuff. Um, so again, they're resolable. So that means you can keep them around for longer. Um, you can give them that character that you like if you're a nerd like me. And uh, like I said, really you're not wasting, um, you know, materials and things like that in the long run. Cause first of all, you bought them used. And second, um, <clears throat> you're not gonna use as much material as a person that is buying brand new. And let's see what else. Um, and it's not, and it kind of goes into this too. It's not a fast fashion item too. It's a timeless piece that you can wear for time and time again. And although certain shoes, a lot of shoes will not fit this criteria, there are certain shoes that if they're well taken care enough, you don't use them often, like a very, very fancy dress shoe. They could be heirlooms too. Um, shoes like that are meant to be rebuilt and reworn over and over again. And if uh, you have a certain shoe that you don't use often and you pass it down to someone, um, that could really, um, you know, just be a, another factor. It could be an heirloom piece, which again, a lot of shoes will not do that. It's just certain pieces that might do so. But yeah, number five, better for the environment, not fast fashion, which we're hiding against, right? All right, number five. Um, let's see. Next, we're going to go into things that we should consider. Um, I have a couple things written down here, and uh, they're just 
general oversights. I have a video, a video, I have an article with um, Nick from Stridewise. Um, he's a huge um, help with me, right? He helps me not only um, encourages me to create these videos, but also uh, is an inspiration as far as how I have my stuff laid out. And, um, you know, I started off some of my writing bits with him. So here is that article down there if you want more detail. <laughs> I, I'm really embarrassed about that article, so please be nice. Um, but yeah, two reasons. Here we go. <clears throat> All right, so my first reason really would be, come down to look at the condition of the shoe, right? Say you're looking at this hat. Uh, let's pull out another one. Say you're looking at this Clark's, right? I know this isn't vintage, but whatever. I just wanted a different shoe on here. Um, say you're looking at this and uh, you're gonna, you're, the first thing you're gonna look at is feel the leather. Make sure it doesn't feel dry. And when you bend it, it doesn't feel like it's cracking or there's no cracks on, you know, your creases. Um, second, what I would look at is really your insole and outsole and your heel. I should have added that. But if you look at your outsole, as long as it's not too, too squishy or it's not like a hole, obviously, you should be okay. Uh, in certain shoes, you're gonna have stitches from the Goodyear welt. Make sure those aren't too worn. Um, and obviously, of course, make sure your heel isn't like highly worn on one side. As far as the insole, this is one that a lot of people don't look at, but I think you should highly look at because I've had a bad experiences with it. But feel the insole and make sure there's not too deep of an impression. Put it on the foot and everything too to make sure you don't feel that impression on your foot. Because if you do, um, unless it's a very nice shoe, you're gonna have to replace the insole and that can get super expensive. Um, it'll like double the cost of your resole if you do that or triple it sometimes. So be sure you have a shoe that doesn't, hasn't been too worn or too impressed on the insole. Uh, be sure your stitches are intact as far as your outsole if you have that. Um, but yeah, be wary of condition because that will matter a lot. Um, it'll determine price too. So if you're okay with a project, that's fine, but a lot of us aren't. So be sure you get a less worn shoe with those sort of things. Again, look at the article for more details. The, f the other thing too that you need to check out is your size. Uh, a lot of people, when they come into this world, they think they're one size, but they find out they've been wearing shoes wrong their whole life. I know I know for me, it's been generally um, similar, but I know if you have a strange size, for example, when you're, if you're a larger foot guy in the 12s and the 13s, you're gonna find that um, you may be a half size to a full size smaller or things like that. And that kind of really impresses people. So what I would do is go to the traditional way of knowing your branding size. Uh, that doesn't determine everything. It's not a very exact measurement because um, there's a lot of things missing and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it should give you a good idea as to how shoes, what shoes should fit. Um, so know your branding size and that should be your true to size for most things. There are exceptions like your work boots, things like that, your Knicks or, or whites, but that's, that's very different. Your, another thing you need to know is your sizing, the sizing of the shoe. Now shoes are built on certain last, right? As in the shape of the mold of the shoe. Um, they have different widths, right? There are things known as combination widths that can mess with you. Um, Alden does them. I know this Hanover has it, but they'll be like um, D width at the ball of the foot and then B width at the, at the heel which means they, they have that sort of design where it's supposed to be comfortable. And most of the time it is, I think for the average foot, it'll fit very well. I know these handovers are a pleasure to wear, but there are times where maybe you have a chunky heel or maybe you have a very narrow foot, right? Where you need to know that sort of thing. So again, another thing to consider with the shoes is sizing. Oh, and on top of that, back then, um, there's, there, there's a trend where vintage shoes have a much more narrow size. Um, there's a couple reasons to it from what I've seen. Um, I saw an ask, ask about Andy uh, clothing, something like that. I forgot the forum, I'll try and find it. Um, that really, it came down to, you know, gentlemen want to have a narrow foot because it looks very elegant and it would look, go a little longer and a little more narrow. Um, or things like, you know, a lot of us nowadays are a little more overweight um, and that kind of increases your foot width at times. Uh, whereas years prior, we weren't as much. Um, but there's all kinds of reasons why. But again, just know your size. That's really important in vintage shoes. All right, guys, uh, thank you for watching the video. I know it's a very talkative video. Um, I know my editing skills aren't 100%, and I know this is not the, I don't, I don't know, there's a lot of things that could be better. 
But, you know, I just want to be consistent. I like the one take style where I just sit down and just do it. Um, I feel like it comes out a lot truer to sense. Um, it feels more human and not as scripted. Uh, and really it comes down to, you know, I want to create consistent content. I think at this point I'm at two videos per month, you know, every two weeks or so. Um, that's something gets me somewhere, but expect a lot more. Again, I am talking with Nick, uh, Nick English from Stridewise. And I feel like we're getting some connections going. I could get a uh, few pairs of shoes coming up from him, from uh, Huckberry. So we can have a few reviews about that. And really it'll come down to just, it's going to be up to me. So be on the lookout. Uh, like I said, if we have enough likes, like I said in the beginning of the video, if we have enough likes, well, I'll definitely try and tear a new shoe apart. And there'll be like a like a department store dress brand shoe, like a Floor Shime or an Aldo or what's another one? Stacy Adams. <laughs> um, so we'll try and tear one of those. That way we know what that looks like on the inside. And that way you guys know why you shouldn't spend your money on that. But yeah, guys, like, comment, subscribe. Like if you like, dislike if you dislike. Um, you guys have a great day. And uh, we'll see you in another couple weeks. Bye-bye.